Welcome back to Station Ears, and it's uh, we've got some updates on the beta branch, so I thought I'd just go quick through those quickly. Very, very welcome updates, in fact. So I've just added all lead to our devices here, and can we just insert this directly? Uh, we probably can. Yeah, that can just go in there. That should get distributed by the sorting system now, which should go up to our furnaces. Let's head up here. And why are we doing lead, you may ask? Let's just uh, switch these on and off just to give it a restart. Yep, there it goes. So that should be producing lead for us. Why? Well, because there is some new stuff available. Remember we had the hard suit helmet and hard suit that we made and then, uh, you know, basically re-equipped ourselves inside our, our, uh, our hydroponics area, which is now down from 180 degrees Celsius down to about 17. It's still dropping, which is good. <laughs> so uh, we had those two, but we still have this original space pack. There is now new recipes. So there is a hard suit jet pack and a hard suit backpack. The difference is the backpack doesn't have the jet jet uh, jet suit capability you can't uh, use the propellant but you get more space because of it however the jetpack itself should have more space than we normally are used to so i will just go with the regular hard suit jetpack and what do we have at the moment we have 10 slots well nine and a propellant slot so let's just eject from the electronics printer and we'll put some gold in over here 171 of gold and we just need that lead now. It's probably dropped out of the end because I don't have a stacker for it. Um, that's a good point, actually. I shouldn't have built this wall here just yet. That's for gold. Have you actually finished? Where is the lead gone? Oh, it's still going. Okay, fine. I'll put that in once we get that finished. So that's that's number one. The other thing we got in this update is going to be in here somewhere. Again, with a whole unsorted list being problematic. But we now should have a portable hydroponics system, which is going to be interesting. There we go, portable hydroponics. Let's take a quick look at that. Copper, steel. Oh, I don't have enough steel. I uh, I need to make more. Um, do I have enough iron around? Let's actually just put that lead in this system as well. Yeah, and I've got my heating system turned off just so we don't run out of power until our power system. So we may have to go back from that, but uh, the the basic version is it's going to be one of the things you start with. So you shouldn't starve immediately. And it'll have a gas canister on it that you can put, obviously, CO2 in, I would assume. And it will then start to grow things. Of course, you will have to supply power to it and everything else like that. So it's all like a starter version of this. But I thought I'd just want to try it at some point once I've got uh, some materials. Uh, what else did you need? Uh, nickel? Yeah, you did want nickel. And copper. Uh, steel, I think, is... It's probably around here, but I think I actually... Uh, have you... Yeah, I've only got 11 steel, so I need to make another batch of a couple of hundred uh, by starting up the heating system again. Speaking of heating system, we've got this to solve, haven't we? So uh, I got lots and lots of comments from a great many of you between the episodes here. Um, again, uh, again, Eric did make some comments, well, lots of comments about how we might do this. And what I thought I'd start off with is, first of all, we're going to have to dump this atmosphere, aren't we? we, we uh, I don't think I can... I haven't built anything to evacuate it. I want this to be sort of uh, just a closed system once we get everything going. So let's just pull the window. And that will, of course, get rid of the, the hot air. And uh, what we're going to be doing in here is I think we're going to be sending out another pipe or another couple of pipes, maybe. Uh, no, maybe just one to start through that block at the back there. So let's just get rid of that with something. There we go. There's our steel sheets. And is this... Uh, this may have warmed up this pipe because we uh, it was a super chilled pipe, if you remember, but it's been sitting in 40... No, it's still minus 148. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay, it is pollutant, which is good. Uh, some CO2 is still in there, uh, double the pollutant, and it's all extremely cold, and I'm not sure what's causing it. I'm, I think it's glitchy. Now, if I was going to be... Well, not cheesy, but maybe. <laughs> if I send in you know, gas that's uh, fairly cold anyway. If we have a look at this gas, um, yeah, it's 15 degrees. Uh, it's That's because it's it's massively stored in that tank up there, which is heated by the sun. It's not terribly warm, 15 degrees. It goes through this, and for some reason, it sort of anti-combusts. <laughs> it shouldn't be coming out colder. 
um, unless there's some kind of heat exchange going on in, in here. And that's a bit of an issue. But what I was thinking of doing was maybe to cheese it, if we wanted to, we could take this pipe and we could dump it back into the room where it's emitting uh, the hot air. Well, the super hot air, in fact, that's, that's taking the temperature up to crazy amounts. So that's one way to do it. Uh, but before I do that, I want to see what we can do without trying to reuse this gas to cool things, because I'd like to try and not... Well, I, I want to assume that that's a bug. And if it is a bug, then we can later come back to it and uh, everything will still be working if we ignore it. But to get things going, I may well, uh, I may well use it just between you and me. <laughs> OK, so one of the things that we actually need to get that started is we're going to need a um, an active vent just for my familiarity, just so that I can see when things are um, just like we've got one in there so I can see when things are actually on. Just help me diagnose things a little bit. And I may well require another block to mount this on. Unless I can mount it on a wall. But maybe another block. Steel frame. Can I put this inside here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to rip out all the outsides, aren't I? Fine, let's rip out the outsides. Um, let's just grab uh, this. I did get tipped, by the way. Uh, remember when I was saying I was really annoyed by the jetpack? Apparently, if you jump and then use it, it's fine. <laughs> so just get used to jumping and then using it. It's very, very odd. OK, no problem. And uh, let's just, is it the grinder? No, I never remember with these these walls, which tool it actually is. There we go. So there we go. Jump and use this. And then finally, what's the final tool going to be? The grinder, I hope. Yeah, there we go. OK, so the reason why I'm ripping all this out is because I want these vents to be the closest possible distance to that generator. It's uh, just one of those things that... Oh, is that dis oh there it is. I was going to say, is it disappeared through the ground? The problem with atmospheres is they take time to propagate. So wherever the heat source is, let's say it's a naked flame, if this was just a one by one block, it wouldn't make no difference whatsoever. But I want a larger room in case I want more of these gas generators later. So if we wanted uh, a larger room, then it takes time for that gas to travel from this block to that block and this block and this block and, and where that gas sensor is. So we may have to move things so that uh, that's not going to be so, so big an issue. So for that, we can just use a steel frame just temporarily and we can weld that up again temporarily. Let's grab you. There we go. And it's about to come daytime anyway, so you'll be able to see things a little bit more. So with that done, we're going to grab an active vent. There we go. And um, we're going to rotate that, I think, to point out back. Um, there, maybe here. That'll do. OK, and then we can just attach regular pipe to that at the back. Do I have any pipe left? Uh, interesting. Let me see if I can just make a few pipe. Let's have a look in here. Get pipe. Yeah, let's get started on that. And do I? Oh, I have six already, but uh, no harm in a few more. Have you finished cooking up my lead yet? You have 25 lead. And we're going to drop it in here and hopefully get our new jetpack. That's going to take a while, so I'm just going to switch that so it doesn't try to make more of them. And we will carry on while uh, our updates continue. So there we go. Uh, we're going to need a um, passive vent anyway. And we're going to be going outside and through here. So let's just send it straight out back. No nonsense. And we're just going to dump it. Because that's the that's what we should do by default. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. We can obviously reclaim it later if there is anything to reclaim or anything worthwhile reclaiming. We'll have a look at that later. So when we have this on and we need to use electronics to do that, uh, we'll need to set it to turn on over a certain amount. So if we have a look at this, it says 
This wheel generator works between 278 and 328 Kelvin. So let's take a five degrees to give it some kind of reasonable amount of time. And so let's say 323 Kelvin and we'll turn this on. OK, so I'm going to get some cable now and I'll sort that out. Uh, well, I'm not going to use that cable, but I'll drop it here anyway. Ah, I've got 40 already. So we can just hook it up to this same line. It can be addressed on this same subnetwork. So let's just get a corner in and we're just going to go straight and another corner. That's just in case I need to cross that with pipe at any particular point. There we go, corner. And a straight piece, another corner, and we'll just go straight down, shall we? Yep, one, two, three, and then a corner and in. Uh, where's my clippers? There they go. There we go, junction. All right, so that should now be able to be accessed from outside. So I'm going to need another set of uh, paperwork. Let's just grab that. Activate is on. And we want it set that way, I think. Uh, I never remember those. I know people do keep reminding me. I just want it to set to be the same as this pumping. Uh, it's the other way. I thought I had it the right way the first way around. Uh, yeah, have it pumping it out essentially whenever it's on. We don't need to worry about electronically control of that. And we can just turn it off for now. So that will do fine. We don't have any other active vents to address on this subnetwork, so we can do that just fine. I'm going to need to make some more chips. So one second. OK, so here's our first version. We'll use an active vent to start off with. And if that needs more, then we can also put in volume pumps and passive uh, vents. I've put a passive vent there anyway. Probably many on this side as well, just in case we need to pump in air quite fast. Uh, I've just left that one where it is for now, but we can just correct, connect it behind the scenes again to feed in stuff into this block space. But at the moment, it's not really worthwhile because this is pulling directly from the atmosphere, not from a buffer tank. And that means it can't really run too well. So what we'll have to do uh, if it, this does work in, in terms of this removes the heat, i.e. removes the gas fast enough, is we'll have to put a buffer tank and just have this on permanently. It's only going to use five watts, I assume. So in fact, let's just double test that because someone did say, why do I use these? And I used to use these because they used to use five watts. But uh, some descriptions do say it should use between five watts and like a kilowatt. So uh, maybe that's a bug as well. So worthwhile testing anyway. Let's just grab the network analyzer for a second and let's just replace the batteries while we're at it and swap that over. Okay, here's our network analyzer, and let's just see. Only problem with doing this is you need to be pointing down. I really could do with some other way of doing this. There we go. Uh, so let's get that. We're looking for the filtration units. So filtration on five watts constantly. So unlike the wall heater, this is only still consuming five watts. Um, unless there's any others, there may be some others. Filtration off and powered, so it's not like this, this one. And that's it. So this one is using 5 watts. So it's a very, very cheap uh, way of getting getting air into any system. And I guess I should swap that back because I'm probably going to need it pretty soon. There we go. OK, so I won't uh, go through this again because we've done this plenty of times before this particular setup. We're taking a value, in this case, 323. We're going to compare that using a less than. Is 323 less than the gas gen room temperature? And that's just being supplied by this logic reader that's looking at that gas sensor that I moved into the same block space. So as soon as the room temperature rises above 323, this logic writer is going to turn on the active vent and get rid of that gas. It's just going to go straight into the atmosphere to start with, which, of course, uh, as if it works correctly, will stop the generator. There's no there's no two ways about it, because uh, if it's if it's pressure in there falls below a certain amount, it'll stop this, too. But really what I'm testing first here is can we evacuate that hot gas quickly enough to keep this thing on just by virtue of the hot gas going down rather than the pressure. So we'll just leave that alone for a minute. Again, once this starts up, we may not even need that that wall heater for too much more lo uh, too much longer. But if we do, again, we'll also probably move it into this same block space just to to keep everything going. So I've got this lever going. This is basically 
turning on the wall heater that's on permanently anyway so we are now at 21 degrees c and 22 kpa which should be enough for this thing to turn on i think uh yeah so why don't we just turn off the wall heater and let's see what happens when i turn on the uh turn on is that, is that the setting for the gas fuel generator yeah let's give this a go on it goes maybe yeah there it goes so our temperature is 123 degrees c <laughs> And then it goes, but then it goes to 40, and this thing is shut off again. So it's massively spiking. Uh, that system, I think, did work. Uh, at least I hope so. Let's, let's see if we can turn it on again. Uh, will it actually turn on again? It will. The active vent did turn on. So it is actually working. It's just spiking every so often. Okay. How can we solve that? Well, there's probably a really quick way to solve it. And that's going to be interesting, actually. Hmm. Do we, do we do it this way? It feels dirty. You don't know what I'm talking about yet, but you will. Uh, and this is still minus 138. <laughs> okay, uh, that's fine. So let's, let's do this the quick and dirty way. So we've got this setup, which just evacuates things. Uh, we've got this setup, which is just my manual controls for now. I'll leave those alone and we'll move them later. And now we've got a couple more walls. Now, someone did say, can you do it that comes computers? The circuits are confusing. I've tried to make the circuits as easily understandable as possible. I understand that that may not be the case because uh, computers are all right for some things. They're state machines. So for things where you're checking through multiple conditions and when one uh, is successful, then it moves on to the next. Where circuits like this, think of them as small units. So this one unit in this block space is a unit by itself. It doesn't really touch anything else. It's just controlling that hardware and we don't have to worry about depending on it for anything else. So that unit is simple. This next unit will also be a little bit more complicated, but may still fit within one block space. It wouldn't, shouldn't be uh, surprising. One second. Okay, now this circuitry is a bit more complicated, but we'll go through it step by step and it should make sense. It's definitely not my design. It comes straight from the wiki. It's called the always on circuit, which may give you an indication about what's about to happen. So we're going to take the gas generator status. We're going to say, is it on at the moment? And that's what this is doing. Gas fuel generator on. And we call this generator status, gen status. We're then going to put that into the top of a select unit. So basically, if the generator status is off, which will be zero, it's going to select this, which is mem high. Mem high is set to one, mem low is zero. Okay, so if the generator is off, this is going to select it, select one. Okay, then the writer is going to write that one to a button. So it's going to push this button in effect. This select unit is looking at that button. See the button at the top? So when the button goes to 1, i.e. it's been pushed by this circuit, it's going to select 1 here, which is mem low, 0. And then we're going to push this through, or this value back through, um, to, the, to, the, to the generator. So invert button, this one. We're going to turn the gas fuel generator the on status. So what's going to happen is this button is going to keep being pushed. Okay. So when it keeps, every time it gets pushed, its value is going to change on this between zero and one. And then that in turn will use this to reactivate the, the generator. So whenever it goes off, uh, whenever the next tick comes in half a second later, this whole thing is going to assess whether it's off or not and it w things won't get kicked off i think so what happens if it's on so if it's on this is one and if one this means that this is going to set to mem low which is zero zero is written to the button that's red here so the memory high and that gets turned on so one equals one so if it's on it nothing really much happens it that's that's perfectly fine but if it's zero it, it'll go through this and push the button which will restart it so it's a restart circuit if you want to think of it like that again it should be simple it is on the wiki in case you don't know how to do it but let's see what happens when we push it so we're at 20 degrees or just below 20 degrees uh wall heaters off 
So uh, 20 degrees should be comfortable. Shouldn't need to have a wall heater. And our pressure's building. All right, so you'll see this is off. So is the wall heater. So we've got this wall heater circuit. Uh, sorry, is the wall heater circuit? Sorry, that's the active vent circuit. Sorry, I don't need a circuit for the wall heater just yet. And this is the restart. So all we need to do is push this to turn it on. So this should start the generator up in a second, I think. Uh, maybe I need to... Do I need to set things to initial values to start it up? Or is it not got enough atmosphere or anything else yet? Hmm, maybe I need to double check that one second. Yeah, all I needed to do is just trigger my my generator once with the lever and once that happens it starts the whole thing cycling so we're sitting here and it by itself it's turning itself on that's heating everything up which is triggering the active vent to cool everything down again and that's going to continue happening now we may not have enough atmosphere in there for that to continue happening you know all the time we have a look at what's happening to the power uh, are we actually getting any more power here though we get more we get 30 kilowatts drops down to six 30 kilowatts, drops down to, to 8, sorry, not say eight, 8, not 6, and that's actually working for us. So it is cycling through and performing work with just an active vent. So I would prefer to have a, a larger atmosphere in here so this could stay on. What I'm wondering now is with that on, will that just be enough to, you know, permanently run our, our heating setup? So if we have this over here, uh, was my my switch? I think I turned it off over here. Easiest way to t is to just to turn it off at the. the yeah. Uh, what are we up now? Three hundred forty-six. Do I need to bring this down any? Uh, whoops. Where's my? Where's my console there? Uh, you're at seventy degrees. I need to make some more changes there. Clearly, but uh, that'll do for now. So it's probably dropped a lot of temperature yet, it's down to 500 degrees, but that won't be a problem if I can leave this system on. Uh, now, at the moment, it will continue to do this indefinitely. You know, there's no actual, there's no actual control going on here with with any of this. And that does mean that um, these, these will just glitch out now just because of the lack of atmosphere and things just rapidly changing you know, in heat and pressure and everything else in there. So they're probably not all that much useful at the moment. So what we may want to then add to this is some way of uh, only starting this up if, you know, our batteries are running a bit low. So I guess we, for that, we move a little bit further along and I'm running out of wall. Uh, maybe I should put another wall on top. Hmm. Uh, for now, can I fit it in here? Well, maybe, maybe. Um, let's just take a look, first of all. Let's see if I can get this. So if we look for a batch slot, uh, batch reader, batch reader, there we go. And let's just rotate this so we have a lot of space. There we go. And we want this batch reader to just give us the batteries. So we want to address the batteries if at all possible. Uh, I'm just going to need to grab some cable and we'll just put a curve there, corner there. And then we'll just put another corner here. Uh, in fact, no, another corner, because we're going to need to connect everything else, aren't we? So, whoops. Let's put a junction in. And we're going to be wanting more junctions, so let's just put that in. And then we can just see if we can address the batteries. So... Let's see what we've got access to. I think we're on the right side of things. Not the battery cell charger. I want batteries in general. Are you in here? Mm, you should be. As long as I connect up the data ports, you should... Oh, no, hang on. No, they won't. Yeah, because they're on the other side of a generator or a... Yeah, yeah, they're on, they're on this high power connection. So if we wanted the batteries to be addressable, We'd need to run a separate cable, probably. I wonder if we can put a logic mirror. Well, let's just grab, let's just pull this up for a second. And uh, <laughs> I'm probably have to run a, long, run a long cable here, but let's just 
see if we can read it from over here instead. We should be able to just separate it without much of a problem, I think, because we can take advantage of uh, the uh, the way the reader works that only connect one side of it. Hopefully that will do it without any problem. Let's grab that batch reader. Well, chip anyway. And then we'll just read from, I don't know, it doesn't much matter here. We can connect it anywhere, but uh, let's say we connect it here. Logic reader. And then we want to just grab some of this cable. And we need to go four way connection there. So let's just grab you. There we go. And oh, this is on the, the, the output side of this. So uh, we can, I think, just go straight into here. Power, I want to say. Yep. There's power, and then we should be able to just read the stationary battery. That's a logic reader. I need to just change that over, don't I? Um, batch reader. There we go. Stationary battery, and I want to read the sum. Um, maybe. So charge. Or is it maximum? Let's let's see what this says. Sum? You're not going to have it? Ratio. Hmm. Am I getting this wrong? I should be able to pull from that information. Why are you saying it's an error? Can I read from that? One second. Let me just try something uh, here. Yeah, that is disappointing. This is actually buggy. Uh, it, the batch reader just d doesn't work directly with uh, stationary batteries. You can put a logic reader in, that's not a problem at all. And if you do, because the batteries are giving out things like maximum or minimum or ratio, and it can't really do an average or a sum, it seems. It just goes, n no. <laughs> so if we set this to stationary battery again, um, there we go and select this to let's say charge um let's just see actually uh we want a ratio maybe power potential power actual um interesting that's the power usage it looks like what can we use for is any of this changing apart from power actual it doesn't look like it does it and that's because it could be one of these that is actually fully charged. So let's, uh, this is just unfortunately the, the logic reader problem. So uh, otherwise we'd use a batch reader. So let's just read this, this one. Uh, let me turn that off, I picked up the wrong thing. Um, part battery. Just so we can identify it. And then switch it on here, you see. There we go, part battery. And we can read charge. There it is changing. We want the ratio. Yeah, there we go. So the ratio is going to show us how full it is. Now, what I think we should probably do with that, or what we're probably going to have to do, is unfortunately these are on two levels, <laughs> which makes this really kind of annoying. Uh, we're going to have to connect multiple of these logic readers together, or we just test one battery. It's up to you entirely how you do it, but we'll, we'll read the ratio and let's say we sum them. So this is going to be then a value between zero and five. Well, uh, yes, five. So we'll then have to do a, and then we'll have to, you know, divide or average or basically get the average of them. In fact, no, we can probably do an average. We can probably use the, the batch reader to read all these logic readers and do an average. So then we'll get an average of what these are, or we add them together and we compare them to a value. Like, say, for example, if they're five, we say, well, if this is under four or if it's under three, I'm going to set uh, a, a value somewhere. We'll run a cable all the way over here and say, if it's under four, then set this to one. And then we'll use an AND gate. We'll replace um, one of these setups with an AND gate over here. The AND gate will literally say, if that's set to 1, i.e. it's low charge, and if this is 1, because this is going to be cycling between the two like mad, 
then we're going to active when you know then we'll allow the generator to actually turn on we're going to replace this logic writer instead of looking at this select unit it will look at the and gate instead so that'll just be a simple change there and again once the charge is low it will then use this restart circuitry to continue trying it now we're just about out of time for that but i wanted to leave you at that point because this is a good point for you to suggest improvements yes we can do it this way <laughs> it works we're getting power out of it don't forget look we are getting power behind the scenes on the other side of things outside we have that pressure regulator remember now eric did kindly say in the comments we might want to do instead of turning on the gas generator we might want to turn on and off that pressure regulator so that fuel doesn't build up in the pipe in between the regulator and the generator however in this case um what i think might happen is if we did that then we'd still need this system because when it heats up it's just gonna it's gonna outstrip anything that temperature jumped from 20 degrees to 120 degrees in half a second i i can't build a system that evacuates that or cools that amount of temperature i, I don't think we, it's possible um maybe with a huge amount of um a huge amount of cooling but we'd still be doing the same kind of thing we'd still be having to pull it all in from this block space and we still have to supply it with more atmosphere so at the moment i'm going to leave that as is i think if anything um what we might want to do is have a buffer tank and have the input controlled so we'll have a buffer tank somewhere i'll just have it continually filling with this and once we have the and gate next episode we'll then be able to um combine that with this to pull from the buffer tank when the pressure is low now most of the time if we have enough solar panels or enough charge then the whole system won't come on which means the buffer will continue to increase the tank will just keep filling and that's exactly what we want when this turns on the generator will start turning on and the tank will start releasing uh, its atmosphere and we're fully charged now you'll see and uh, so we can probably just shut off this logic writer because that should deactivate itself it'll take a little while because it's cycling this like mad but you'll see the generator has essentially stopped trying and we can just shut down this at the top as well if we wanted to between the episodes and <laughs> these are still going to go nuts they do eventually settle it just it's very very well uh glitchy in there <laughs> let's, let's put it that way so yeah i will leave it here because there'll be improvements you might be able to think of for this one block space maybe you can think of a cooling system that's fast enough eric did make some comments about using parallel valves it does seem a little bit because of the other way that the system calculates things it does seem a little bit um again cheesy and glitchy but if we have to and if we want to we could use this as a source of cold gas feed it back in and see what happens to the temperature and pressure that's perfectly possible as well i don't know we'll see you next episode see what that uh, actually entails so we have five uh, nice fully charged batteries now our heating system is on over there i think is it or did i turn it off oh you can never tell because the yeah it's still on yeah i did turn it on halfway through the episode and that's heating up so yeah i'll leave it there if you like the episode if you wanted to improve things put comments down below if you like the episode feel free to like subscribe and share as normal especially subscribers we're getting very close to five thousand now quite happy about that taking quite a long time but uh, hopefully 10k won't be anywhere near as long we'll see and um yeah i'm more than happy to hear improvements especially if you can think of a better way of doing this than me putting down uh if we wanted a complete thing five logic readers and then something to basically sum them or average them how we do want to do that it seems a bit annoying to have to do that but we can you know there's no real problems there if we want to otherwise i will see you next episode and as always guys thanks for watching Yes, for anyone still watching, <laughs> I do forget one thing. Ah, got a new jetpack. Um, can we can we see what's in it? Look at that. 10, 14 slots plus propellant. There we go.